Actually, something a little bit different today. It's a fan commentary for Michael Jackson's Thriller. Here's the disclaimer. Well, the first disclaimer, the material on this home video product, including video cassette and video disc. Can you believe this was actually on Laserdisc? How cool is that? Something to look for for all you collectors out there. Here's a super cool Vestron video logo. I still can't believe I was mentioning this to... I might have been Tom the other week there, one of the last videos my sister ever rented, and this isn't even a joke, even though I only saw it like a few days ago, one of the last videos she ever rented was this, well, this a version of this, the thriller and the making of thriller, is the second disclaimer, due to my strong religious beliefs, that's in no way an endorsement of the old cult, and uh, some heavy breathing there. What's funny though, how could anybody even watch this and think it was uh, an endorsement for the occult? Apparently I've just checked Car Movie Database and this is um, a 1957 Chevy Bel Air. Also, it's very specific for UK viewers, but there's um, a celebrity, <laughs> kind of, he'd probably be proud of that tag, uh, named Lee Francis, and he plays characters like Keith Lemon. And he did a, a music video. It wasn't a parody of this song, but it was just a, a crazy novelty pop song, which we have thousands of in the UK for some reason. And it was called Proper Crimbo. And he did a version of uh, this intro. I think it was with uh, Matthew Wright, who was playing the uh, female character, who uh, uh, hosts a talk show in the UK called The Right Stuff, which I was actually on once. Uh, talking about um, celebrity name dropping, I met the director of this, John Landis, and if you're playing the John Landis drinking game, don't drink anything too strong or else you'll probably be dead at the end of this. What is really funny though about this as well, because the way Michael Jackson's dressed there with that college, sort of high school, American jumper, you don't seem to get them in this country where you get the letter, I'm saying the high school that you went to. But really, and I guess this was probably the look that they were going for, very reminiscent of things like Invaders from Mars and The Blob, both the original versions, or maybe the 80s remakes for that matter. Apparently, I was listening to an interview, apparently, uh, 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 John Landis was saying about this uh, when Michael Jackson was first saying he wanted to a music video, like a film sort of music video to this. And apparently Michael Jackson laughed when he says, What's this line like? If I'm different than other people. What, what's the thing about that? John Landis laughs as if, let's say, oh, you know, you're this incredible pop star, singer, dancer, songwriter, you know, <laughs> so you're charismatic as anything. And what's really funny about this, and I was trying to think just before I did the commentary, who said this, but there was a program once about Michael Jackson. And it was somebody like Lady Gaga or uh, somebody of in that sort of spectrum. Um, oh, what's her name? Queen Latifah. Somebody in that kind of musician type area saying that if um, you weren't alive when Michael Jackson was releasing brand new videos, you started to just realise just how impressive they were and just how exciting it was. And I've just had a flashback, amazing Rip Baker makeup there, um, to when this was premiered on Channel 4. And, like, you know, I, I kind of got into horror films a little bit later than most people when I was about seven. <laughs> but, like, and remember being so scared, and this was like on, oh, what's funny, because now it's like uh, 4.38 on a Wednesday. See you next Wednesday uh, in the afternoon. And it was on, I think, about 5 to 7 or something like that, just before Channel 4 News. And I'm being just so scared by it. What's really funny as well, because when the, it cuts to him in the cinema, and uh, John Landis, uh, uh, take another sip there, folks, if you're drinking. Speaking of which, I'll just uh, take a sip of my coffee. And, uh, ah, in the cinema, Michael's loving it. Uh, yeah, but Vincent Price, he does the narration in the um, the actual song and uh, the uh, on the film and on the song. And if you notice, um, on the other side it says Vincent Price. But also as well, you see, you used to say, see you next Wednesday. And that's a John Landy's trademark. But there, I would say, see the marquee, it says Vincent Price. But what's really sweet, I think one of these posters is for House of Wax in 3D as well. 
which I guess was one of the films that he, they should have been watching. Um, oh yeah, The House of Waxen. Oh, Schlock, that's the uh, the first film that John Landis ever made. I think that's one of the first times I've really properly clocked that poster. Uh, but yeah, just as, just as it cuts from inside the cinema to outside you, somebody say, see you next Wednesday, and any time, John Landis, any time somebody, any time John Landis uh, uses an, an idea from this, that script, somebody will say, see you next Wednesday in the thing, in the thing that he's filmed, not the thing. Also worthy of mentioning, any time it goes from the non-music video parts to the quote-unquote normal parts, um, Albert Bernstein does the music of um, Ghostbusters and Wild Wild West fame, just f- featuring famous musicians, no less. But uh, what's funny, I was, uh, uh, on that same interview I was saying about John Landis, actually, uh, got the John Landis drinking card ready, folks, but I still can't believe that, like, and it always kind of makes me laugh when you get people saying, oh, I was trained by someone who's trained by someone who's trained by Bruce Lee. But I do really think it's funny that, like, when I had my picture taken with John Landis and he put his arm on my shoulder, and I've lit, since seen uh, footage of John Landis amazingly picking up Michael Jackson, which could mean, uh, you know, if, uh, dangerous for both of them if he'd fall over or something. But, uh, so, in a roundabout way, I, and this, I don't mean this to sound how it sounds, I've been touched by somebody who touched Michael Jackson. How cool is that, eh? Oh, it's a, even in a, a video as short as this, I've got to go open the door for the cats. Don't uh, don't touch that dial. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> six forty-seven. Love to try, <laughs> and not the, uh, and not the mic. I love to try and uh, if it's uh, sounds ar- if if the sound disappeared for thirty seconds, then it's uh, when I just act. <laughs> That's so terrible through headphones. This is again. What's oh, that's funny as well. These two. It was a Mastertronic great. Uh, it's me say a master. Tronic Game, uh, which is a British software company that used to release um, low-budget computer games for like a couple of pounds in the 80s. And then one called Chiller, and it was like the artwork was based on Thriller. What's that there? Sis Greaves, Claire Sis Greaves, it says on the uh, the gravestone there. Yeah, but this is um, Vincent Price on the soundtrack, and what's really sweet, I've got um, a roller coaster video called American Screamers. It's from like the the very late seventies, very early eighties, and funnily enough, the the box of this VHS is um, almost like a giant audio cassette box, which is really sweet because it's just Vincent Price going on roller coasters, but he calls them rolly coasters. <laughs> so it's like you know, actually talk about this. I'll say it just to, to completely time stop this commentary. But I was just watching an episode of the regular show while I was setting up, and uh, the actual plot point was to try and get back the best VHS of all time. So they could join a video shop. I always thought the regular show was quite new. Uh, evidently not. <laughs> oh yeah, but that was another thing as well. I heard um, an interview with uh, John Landis saying that, um, like, because M- that when this was made, like MTV was sort of brand new, and oh, what was the other channel? I think it was HBO was brand new, and so it was like this co-fundy thing. I think MTV put some money up for it. I think it was HBO put some other money up, but turned out that. Um, John Landis, um, f- just for legal reasons, I want to get this semi correct. Uh, hopefully, I don't want to. Uh, but um, John Landis owned the rights to the making of, but not the rights to the thriller music video. And somebody, like, just gave away the music video part, like, so that's why the music video was given away to, like, you know, that's why, you know, triple the sales of. Um, a thriller, even though it's the biggest selling album of all time before this music video. When this music video came out, it tripled the sales because this video was just everywhere and then the making of was everywhere. But also, I remember John Landis saying about this because, like, you know, even though there was music videos you know, 10 years before this, he says because it costs so much to make, he says, and these like sort of wide shots like this, where you see like the choreography, he says, when the like move the feet or jump off the ground the all spot on i guess it's michael jackson choreography so it's all it's hardly um you know that surprising to say that the commentary was really you know really spot on but also as well um well oh, there look at that just uh, that jump up there It'd be interesting to get like a little screen grab of that where they're all in the air at the same time 
Oh yeah, but one of my favourite. Oh, that's just something to do a little bit about guitar then. I don't think I've ever seen that before. But what is funny about this though as well, I remember seeing in some of the notes, um, I think it was on the DVD version of Day of the Dead saying that they wanted, like, because Eve, can you believe in even in like 1984, 1985, 1980, that zombies had become a bit passe. And I remember Tom Savini, I'm sure it was a quote from Tom Savini or Greg Nicotero saying that they wanted to make the zombies in Day of the Dead particularly horrific because people were getting used to zombies because of things like Thriller. Yeah, but oh, there's the famous the standing on his tiptoes there. Uh, but yeah, then 30, again on 30, one of my favourite lines is uh, uh, when Jenna Rink says, Hey, Maddie, it's Thriller! Because they're playing the soulless music again, even in the 80s. Or well, fictional 80s, anyway. And as well, um, can you, when I found out once that the Prodigy had sampled Thriller, and it shows how genius the prodigy are and what a great DJ and musician Liam Howlett is because on the song, just looking at my notes to get the title correct, the way it is, they sample Thriller, but it doesn't sound, because how popular Thriller is and how sort of intense that riff is and everything, you'd really think that like sampling Thriller would just come across, across as like, you know, really like, you know, a, not a cliche thing to do because I've gone and they got the rights to sample Thriller anyway, but just like, you know, it's that bit like doing a version of Jump, which coincidentally off. I've got the album Thriller here, the 25th anniversary one that's got um, some great interviews with uh, the people that wrote the song. And I think they said they wrote, it's a British guy, wrote Thriller in a taxi on the way to the studio. Um, but yeah, like, um, Eddie Van Halen did the solo on the song Beat It, which is also on the album Thriller. Um, uh, but yeah, you would think like a song sampling Thriller would just sound like, like say, it's a bit like if you sample Jump or Axe Left, you can come across as being like, oh yeah, it's a really creative song. And like, look at this, but like, this is the bit that actually really sticks with me, like when. Uh, uh, you know, it's like they're all, you know, th that bald daddy guy looks like the main Reed, something called Reed Zombie from Tom Savini's Night Limb Dad remake. Fair enough. But what's funny there, though, it's all a dream. I'm, I think I'm the only person in the world that likes the It's All a Dream ending. <laughs> all the, and, and then the, the one where they're like there, and no, no, it's not. I'm sure those uh, contact lenses are always a little bit ski with, <laughs> directed by John Landis. Did I say I saw John Landis? <laughs> Produced by John Landis. I've seen him. <laughs> Written by John Landis and Michael Jackson. I've seen John Landis. <laughs> I've seen John Landis and other celebrities co-starring Ola Ray. That, that Ola Ray, the same. What's the name of that guy? Uh, Fred Olin Ray. Rick Baker on EFX. He, uh, Fred Olin Ray is on um, A Night of the Living Dead um, 25th Anniversary. And uh, with John Landis as well. So I don't want the same person, but it made me think of it. Well, it's really, uh, George Fosley, he did uh, produce uh, Trading Places as well. Apparently as well, this interview that was on uh, Hollywood's Best Directors, which is on uh, TCM at 3am in the UK all the time. But John Landy said that the reason this is uh, 14 minutes long is because that's the exact same length as um, a Three Stooges short or a Bugs Bunny short because that's um, exactly uh, how long they want it to be because it was released theatrically. Look uh, at that, the zombie's got no head. And I like that the copyright symbol says Undead. And that's uh, something that John Landis did in American Wealth in London, which was the film that Michael Jackson saw that wanted him to do, to direct this film. I just say I met John Landis. <laughs> Optimum Productions and Zombie looks to the camera, freeze frame, and keep it locked. <laughs>